In this video I'll be assembling the miniature train. I'm going to do a new standard.iam and click create. Over here where it says place from content center, I'm going to drop use the drop down, change it to place. That allows me to get to the pieces that I need. I'm going to start with the train body and click to open it. Click to place it and I could place it multiple times but the train body I only need once so I'm going to right click and just choose OK. Now the first piece that I bring in I want to make sure that it stays in this ISO top front right position. To do that I come over and right click and choose grounded and it's kind of off the screen here so I'm going to see if I can right click on here and again it's just outside the screen so down two from here you're going to click and choose grounded. Then we're going to come back and do place. I need to grab the wheels. So I choose the wheel, choose open. And I'm going to place the wheel one, two, three, four times. Right click and OK. I'll go back to place and we're going to attach those with the axle peg. So I'll click it, select axle peg, and put those in four times as well. Right click and OK. We'll use the constrain tool. And when we did Puzzle Cube, we used the mate for most of it. In this one, we're going to use the insert. So I'm going to select insert. And what I'm going to do first is roll up under here, select right underneath the edge of the axle peg. And then I'm going to select the edge of the wheel, apply it and roll it around to the back side, select where it comes out, and then select the edge of the wheel. And just to show you, I'll click OK, take it back, and I should be able to turn the wheel. So again, constrain, go to insert, roll it up, catch underneath the lip of the axle peg, into the edge of the wheel, apply, roll it back around, catch where it's coming out the back of the wheel, and into the edge of the train. And we'll repeat that process for the other two. Again, underneath, into the edge of the wheel, apply, and while I'm here I'm going to go ahead and do this one into the edge of that wheel and apply it and then where it comes out into the edge of the train always make sure to apply first and one more time then OK and I'll click on the house to bring me back to an ISO top front right we can come back and choose place we'll bring in the cow catcher place it out front I'll go back to place, grab the smokestack, place it, right click and OK. So for the smokestack, very similar, go to constrain, choose the insert, we're going to choose the bottom edge, and then roll up on top of the train and we want to choose down inside the bottom of the hole. If you try to click the, ups, the edge up top it's not going to work because it's on a curve. It only works with flat surfaces. So I click the bottom and apply it. Then for the cow catcher I'm going to do the top peg and in this case I'm going to choose where the peg attaches to the cow catcher not on the end because it's a little harder to get into the bottom of the hole sometimes. So I'll click that end and we'll come and place it here on the top edge and apply it. And I can't see the other parts here so I'm going to cancel this and what I'm going to do is twist the edge of the cow catcher so that I can see that hole and that should give me access from the back side the peg there. So 
I'm going to come in again, do a constrain, insert where it comes off the edge. And then back on the front, I'll catch the edge of this and choose OK. Now, with two pegs in place, it's not going to move anymore, so I don't have to put the third plug in, peg in. If you wanted to see if your pegs were actually in place, you can go up to the view. And if you're having a problem attaching it, this is how you can find out if you've got a, an issue with it. Change the visual style to a wireframe. And you can either choose the wireframe or the one with the hidden edges. But I can look in here and I can see that my holes are lining up. If my holes had been off, I would see one circle here and another circle located next to it. So that's a good way to check. Then I can go back to shaded just to take it back to the original view. I need to add the hitch magnet and the hitch peg. So on the assemble, we'll go grab the hitch magnet. And to the place, and grab the hitch peg. Roll it up, do constrain, insert, click there, and into the peg, apply it. And we'll click this edge and where it comes out the back of the magnet and apply. So now we've got the hitch peg and magnet attached. We'll go and get the linkage arm and the linkage peg. So a linkage arm, I need two of them, one for each side. And for the linkage peg, I need four. Constrain, insert. Now what we'll do with this one is we'll attach the linkage arm to the inside of where the smaller peg comes out and click OK. And if this is lined perfectly, it may look like it's attached, but if I were to take this around, you can see that that piece is still off of there. So I want to drag this down, go back to constrain and insert, and we're going to catch where it comes off here. and on the same side and OK. OK, so now it's attached. Do the same thing on the other side. Choose to insert. Click the edge there and where it attaches. Apply it and the edge here. And I need to make sure, some people make a mistake, they try to hit this side. That would try to flip it, and it's not possible for that to happen. I've got to move it to the other side, and click, and apply. And then we can come in and put the pegs in. So we'll go underneath the lip of it, into the edge of the hole, and apply. Underneath the lip, into the edge of the hole, apply that. over on the other side, underneath the edge, into the hole, and one last time. And OK. So if I take the wheel and I start spinning it, notice how that starts to go backwards on the back wheel and forward on the front wheel. So it's a little glitch that happens periodically. We want to fix that. I'm going to place this rail on the bottom, and on the opposite side, I'm going to place the rail on the top. Then within the wheel, come over here to wheel 1, hit the plus sign next to it, the plus sign next to the origin, and we're looking for the plane that runs vertically. So here it's the XZ plane. I'm going to right click and turn the visibility on. Then I'm going to do a constraint and I'm going to come in and choose the angle. And then under the solution, I'm going to pick the first one, the directed angle. And I'm going to tell it that the uh, plane here 
is the first choice, the second choice is the plane there, and what I'm telling is to keep those angles the same. So if I go ahead and I click OK, now when I bring this around, those are never going to change, and it's going to keep it from flipping back and forth. So I had that on the bottom. I'm going to leave it there. Come back and go to Constraint again, to the angle, the directed angle, and I'm going to choose the plane here and the plane on this side. And if I click OK, then these are running independently of the other side. Now if I want them to all run together, I can click Constraint, Angle, go to that directed angle, and I click the plane on the front of this wheel and the plane on the front of that wheel, and OK. And now when I click it, all four wheels will go at the same time, and they're alternating where one of the linkage arms is up, and as it comes around, then the other one goes up. With that done, I'm going to come back over to the plane here, right-click, and turn off the visibility. And that completes the assembled train. We'll click Save. And I just changed the name to Assembled Train. Yes to all and OK.